Yeah, we get a sub at this critical juncture. Well, that's gotta be a, a big blow. I feel like it's super frustrating for Kageyama. Come to think of it, how is he planning on defeating him when they're on the same team? What does defeating him mean? They're not breaking, they're the fire is still in them. Yeah, there it is. This is really exciting. Oh man, how satisfying would it be if he comes through and crushes it? It's bringing a tear to my eye just thinking about it. To me, it feels like a big moment for Kagama character-wise because a lot of his backstory has revolved around selfishness. He's not in the game right now, but I think from what I've seen, I have enough faith in him to believe that even though he is fired up and wants to win and is a competitor, he's going to be rooting for his teammate's success. That's my guess. And who's to say he won't come back in later in the game? He's all jazzed up. Episode 21, Senpai's True Abilities. Oh man, I feel like this happened to me especially often when I was younger. Being in a bad mood about something would become exponentially worse if somebody noticed I was in a bad mood and pointed it out to me. That's really interesting. That's real power. But, yeah, Mr. Refreshing. Accurate. He's doing more than just replacing Kagama's position on the court. He's bringing new life into this game. New energy. But how does he play? What are his true abilities? Oh, it felt good. <laughs> Seeing the triple defense on the other team, on our team. Who's the iron wall now? Daichi smiles encouragingly in the background. I know it's an odd detail, but I keep noticing it in the show. I keep pointing it out. I don't think I've ever seen a show where they put this much attention into like group shots with varying facial expressions that shows you where everyone is to some extent. We're still in a deep hole though. Oh, he's, he's planning. Pretty Boy's not the only one who can plan on this court. Not with a big block. He's been watching. I guess there's a whole other benefit you can get from being outside. Different perspective. Right, right. That makes sense. Some things you would never notice participating in something can be really obvious when you're outside of it. Yeah, I feel like it's definitely in there. But it's not the predominant thing for him right now, for Kagama. He's probably just thinking ahead. It's pretty damn good. Sugawara, just easy to like. <laughs> Very easy to love. <laughs> You're coming back. Oh, coming back. I'm gonna run. It's so cool every time. It never gets old. This hype. Oh no. Bill throwing himself against that fence, hell yeah. <laughs> so, oh, switch it up a little bit. He's got that amazing precision. Daichi coming up big. Oh no. Who's gonna go up for it? Oh, nice. What? I thought that was great. I thought he did that deliberately. All right, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. They adjusted a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hopefully, he just expended all of his tricks. Ooh, this is the first time I think we've been in a hole. That's the first thing they lost in this tournament so far. Oh, they're working together. It's so heartwarming. You know, there could have so easily been bad blood here. Exactly. Yeah, 
That's really beautiful. I love that. My dreams have come true in this episode. The fire is still there. We don't need to worry about that. It's all just about ability at this point. They're not lacking heart. Definitely not lacking wisdom. I don't know what the difference is. There are certain things in life where I want a lot of attention and want to shine, where I feel ultra competitive in a way that has the, the capacity to lead to jealousy. There are other areas of life where I'm just really happy to play a role that's useful. There's something beautiful to me about having something that you really, really love, really care about, really value, where you can say you've played a critical role. I think in certain things, even if it's a small role, if it goes somewhere good, you are an essential part of that role now and forever. Like it's an unchangeable fact that you participated and you were a building block of that thing that you love. You know, how lucky and special is that? I can blow this idea way out of proportion too and make it way bigger than volleyball. Everybody who's ever lived, regardless of intent or even cognizance of this fact, has formed a node on the web of existence that is eternal. And so while that can be a little bit terrifying, perhaps because of the responsibility it might bring, there's something really beautiful about identifying a way in where you feel like you've done well or contributed, no matter how small it is, because you are now on a cosmic scale, an essential part of at least human existence, and perhaps something even much greater. All that to say, I love Siguara's energy and attitude. I feel like for someone like him, thinking about it in this way, just the fact that he has contributed, even if he doesn't play any winning sets, you can already trace the positive impact he's having on his teammates. So whatever victories they have, while he may not be the star, while he may not be able to take full credit for it, you can't separate him from it. In a certain way of looking at it, their victories are all equally shared. It's something you can't really divide and calculate. Now we got a fresh start. Blank canvas. We're more fired up than ever. Who's tinkering now? Who's testing now? <laughs> Take notes. Speaking of wanting game time, this guy's gotten the least exposure out of any character. そいつらがちゃんと100% Okay, but who are you? <laughs> no, I'm joking. But really, who is he? Oh, okay. 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 There was never any doubt for me. Yeah, that was such a huge point. That was so amazing. And I feel like for someone like Oikawa, who's used to kind of dominating and controlling, there's a chance he starts breaking down when he loses control. <laughs> he notices. Wow, this game's going way faster. Oh, lost the lead. It's a nice shot. <laughs> yep, exactly the same. And they're nice compliments to each other. This is giving me a lot of faith in Sugiwara, just the fact that he's loving it, despite the pressure. Ah, oh, but it's not really translating into the points I need. Uh, maybe it's time for a rotation. Yeah, this feels right, but he played his role really well, admirably. Daichi just out here crushing it. He called for it, and he got it. And now Kageyama gets to come in refreshed and with a new perspective. Passing off the baton. No bad feelings at all. Total humility. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're, they're destined for each other. Yeah, it's no small task either. Yeah, 
Don't do. Sugawara Kuni took the Tsugi to you. He proved himself. He's got a big role on this team. Sorry, got taken over. Oh, my Takeda Kageyama. I feel like this round's in the bag. My concern is the third one. This episode didn't go the way I thought it would go. It was more beautiful. It went right over, right past the obvious complexities for Kageyama being subbed out and went right to a higher level where the drive was still there for him. There obviously has got to be a little bit of frustration or just genuine desire to participate and play and overcome the challenges he was experiencing on the court. But everything about it felt high level to me. It felt really mature. And then having Sugawara come in, get a chance to play what seems like a pivotal role in this game, contribute in a, in a unique way and be satisfied with what he had done, you know, playing his role to the best of his ability and seeing them collaborate and understand each other was way more than I expected from this episode. I wonder what the difference is. You know, like there's there are some things that I just feel really great to participate in and I don't really need anything from it. I don't really need any accolades or special attention. I don't need to be the best. Other areas where I feel just super driven to be recognized for what I'm doing and other areas where I just hate it entirely, you know, and I just don't want anything to do with it and I don't even want to do my role well. Maybe one key factor is how much the overall goal resonates with you and how much of it are things that are really robust and healthy. One example I would give for that state where I'm just happy to play a role well would be with my core friend group, you know, people I really care about. It makes me really happy if I feel like I've done anything, you know, if they come to me for help or ask me for a favor or anything I have expertise in that I feel I can provide a meaningful answer. It's one of the best feelings for me and I really don't get anything material or measurable out of it. It's just like the acknowledgement like, oh, I actually provided some value to something that I really care about. And maybe when it's something where there's a little bit more selfishness in it, it's not about the endeavor itself, but it's a means to an end for other kinds of gain. And perhaps when it's something that there's just no connection to it at all and you don't even want to play your role to any degree means that you don't feel like there's any outcome in there for you, that the positive outcome maybe will be enjoyed by someone else, that the reason you're participating in it is just so far removed from the actual goal that it becomes hard to connect it to real motivation to do one's best. I'm just thinking out loud here, but maybe there's something to be said in that case for picking the right things as goals and where to spend energy, finding the things that are most meaningful and applying full force. Just a great episode. And they're doing all this, you know, all this great character stuff in the midst of what is probably the most intense and suspenseful game they've played so far.